Alright, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're taking another look at the GeForce Experience Share Beta, which is the recording software for NVIDIA that they put in with your drivers that you can install the GeForce Experience and get access to a pretty decent free games recorder that can also stream and record like little quick highlights from the last so many seconds or minutes of your gameplay. And I decided to make another one of these tutorials simply because NVIDIA is constantly changing how this works and it gets a little bit silly and confusing. So I'm going to walk you guys and gals at home through how to set things up and get it working. So the first thing you need to do is download the GeForce Experience, and if you want to get the latest share version, you're going to need to download the beta of this. And then once you've got it open and installed, the first thing it's going to do is want to look through all of your games to try and recommend how you can optimize the settings for your system. And then it'll also have, like, information over here on the latest drivers for your computer. But what you really want to do is A, Log into your NVIDIA account over here. I've got, I just have it set up as Larry Bacon because it's just the easiest for me. Because oddly, Chupacabra is either flagged as a word in everyone's database or it's just too long or taken, which is weird. But uh, Larry Bacon's my name in here. So in order to enable or use the share beta at all, the share program, which is the recorder and the streamer, is you first you got to enable it. So you go to settings by clicking on the little gear icon up here, and then you want to go down to this little box here that says share, and just hit the toggle, and now you're able to get into the share beta, or not the, well, the beta, but the program itself, and you can either click on this little icon up here that's like a share icon that you'd see on, like, a phone, or you can hit whatever you have set up for the hotkey to open and close it. Mine is shift, alt, plus the tilde key, which is the button right next to your number one key. And then once you do that, you will open up the sort of overlay that allows you to access your settings, turn things on and off, or adjust the quality controls to all of the different features. So there is a fourth feature in here that I'll get to in a minute, but for some reason it ended up being disabled temporarily for the purposes of this video. So the three primary categories that you've got for recording or streaming is the instant replay, which is this whole thing here is it records so many seconds or minutes all the time and you hit the, the hotkey and then it keeps that video instead of throwing it out when it just sort of over records over what you've already been doing. So you can set this to as little as half a minute, so the last 30 seconds, or you can record the last 20 minutes of gameplay and this is mostly meant to be like a highlight reel type of functionality that you can use to like make a quick highlight reel clips. So most people will probably want to set this to like the last minute or like 30 seconds or a minute and a half, but it didn't go up as far as 20 minutes. But if you're going to do that, you might as well lay out your episodes and record them properly. At least that's my take on it. And then of course, down here, there are some video quality presets like low, medium, and high, and these mostly have to do with the bitrate that it's recording your videos at. If you wanted to do a high quality video bitrate, you'd want something around 35 to 55 megabits per second, especially because I don't necessarily know how good the GeForce Experience recording engine is at keeping that quality, but basically the way that bitrate works is it's like a giant pipe that the quality can go through for your video. The bigger the pipe, the more quality that can fit in there. And there is a kind of a plateau to how much quality you're capable of recording with a, a software recorder like this when you're recording another piece of software. But, you know, around 55 megabits per second is probably all you need for places like YouTube. Uh, basically, you can set it at multiple different resolutions. The default is going to be in-game, so it'll, by default, record at whatever resolution you're currently playing with. If you see any weird hiccups with that, I would suggest setting it down to 1080p HD. And then the other thing that's fun about the um, Shadowplay system, or now it's called Share, 
is that it's actually capable of recording 4K video from pretty much every game. It's a little laggy if you don't have a super powerful computer, but it actually does pretty good 4K recording, even if you're not playing at 4K resolutions. Although, the general rule of thumb is, if you're not recording or playing at that resolution, don't record at that resolution, because it's going to be janky. Now, you can play at 4K resolution and downscale it safely to 1080p, but not reverse. You can't play at a low resolution or record a high resolution. It looks weird. And then, of course, my usual spiel is if you're not getting a solid 30 frames per second while you play the game, don't record at 60 FPS. That's basically how it works. If you're getting a solid 30, record at 30. If you're getting below a solid 60, don't record at 60. But if you're getting like 80 consistently for frame rate, then definitely use 60 because it looks beautiful and gorgeous and smooth and suave. So I'll save those settings. The next thing is your recording. So recordings are much like the instant replay, except this, when you click the hotkey, starts recording and then stops when you hit the hotkey again. And then this is for when you want to have like a solid, consistent recording where you're setting up an episode and you want to start at a specific time and end at a specific time. Recording is the way to go. I have it set up to have like a custom sort of quality setting where I record at 1080p, 60 FPS, and then I'd probably dial it back to like 35 megabits per second, because honestly, beyond that is a little bit excessive, even for HD recording on the computer. And it looks pretty good at around 35. If you're really concerned, you can max it out. And recordings will go up to 4K resolutions by default. And from what I've heard from other people who have tested sh the share recording system, it'll also let you go up to like 8K although it's a little bit janky and sometimes causes errors, glitching, or weird stuff with your videos. Simply because, you know, most of these recorders are meant to record at something standard, like 1080p or 720p. But it will go up that far, and the way that you get it to record at 8K is you set it to the in-game resolution, so it'll pay attention to whatever your system and your game resolution is at, and then it'll record that. And if you want to go as high as 8K, I'd suggest maxing this out at 130 megabits per second. But if you want something standard like 1080p or 1440 or 2160, you probably don't need to go beyond like 80. The middle, the middle ground, the middle, fr the middle bit rate is usually all you need, especially because, and keep this in mind when you're uploading stuff to YouTube, YouTube compresses the shit out of your videos and knocks them down to like 8 megabits per second, if not smaller. The recommended upload for most videos is between 8 megabits and like 25 for like a 60 FPS vi video. So I'm gonna set mine to 35, 1080p, 60 FPS, and again, only use 60 FPS if you're getting a consistent 60 FPS or above. And then we'll save that. And then last but not least, you've got the ability to stream to different places. So by default, it only lets you stream to either Twitch or YouTube. There is no option for any other third parties. Like you can't put in a custom URL or anything. So if you don't stream to either of these platforms, if you stream to like Hitbox, for example, you're going to need to get a different program for streaming, probably something like OBS. So basically, the way that this works is you just pick one of these services that you want to stream to, and you're going to have to go into here and set up... Oh, I'll, I'll enable streaming so that people can see what that is. Um, you're going to have to go into here. You're going to have to go into Broadcast and you're going to have to set up an account for one of these different services. And where is it? I believe it's in here somewhere. Basically, you have to log in through the... Here it is. You have to log in with this through the Shadowplay system in the login section. So you'd have to log into your YouTube account here or your Twitch account. And then you can also upload natively to Imgur with your screenshots. And then you'd be good to go to select how you handle different broadcast settings, like broadcast games from my Chupacabra desktop to Twitch or to YouTube. And you could have it always ask or you can determine the default service that you want to stream to. If you stream to both, you could actually have it so that it asks you which one you want to send it to. You can upload a custom overlay that you can use, and then you can select the ingest server that you use for that particular service. 
So once we go back into here, let's go back to broadcast. So stop it. There we go. So basically you just select whichever service you want to stream to currently, and then you can determine your settings. I can say that the presets are all right, except for the bit rates. So for high quality or ultra quality for say Twitch, the highest frame rate they prefer that you go is around 3.5 megabits per second. They will let you get away with up to six megabits per second. But the trouble is when you have a high, if you do this during like peak hours on Twitch, they might throttle you and the people watching your stream might see a bunch of buffering. So I'd suggest keeping it between three and four megabits per second so that Twitch doesn't get mad at you. And then again, if you get some solid frame rates, do 60. If not, do 30. And then again, and if you're not in possession of a super great connection, you might want to downgrade your resolution to something like 720. And then that's pretty much it. Just pick your bit rate, pick your frame rate, pick your resolution and go from there. Uh, I do know that YouTube will pretty much accept whatever you're willing to hork down for it. So go, go for broke with YouTube. Go like 1440p. Max that little, that puppy out to like nine megabits per second if your connection can handle that much of an upload speed. And YouTube just gobbles that right up because YouTube's got some big honking servers. And otherwise, once you've got that setting going, you can either start the stream, start the recording by clicking this and then clicking the start button or turn on for these instant replays. Instant replays are constantly on and if they're off, they won't, you won't be able to save any of your replays. So this you have to enable. Recording you start or stop like you would for any other recording program. Broadcasting's the same way, start or stop. And then what in the devil is streaming? So basically streaming is the availability. If you have somebody else with the NVIDIA share program where you can actually directly watch one of your friends playing like a screen share service and you can actually allow them to take control of your game. This is a little bit wibbly wobbly. You can say watch, play, or play alongside if you wanna do like a, a multiplayer game. But this is a little bit oh, hinky and I don't necessarily know how well it works. I will not be covering the in-depth of how to use the stream functionality in this simply because I have no one to test it with. Just because not a lot of my friends who have NVIDIA really wanna bother using the GeForce experience. So the other stuff that's in here is you can set up some different overlays in your settings. Like you can set up a camera on or off. If you wanna set up a camera, you can put it into one of the different corners. You can have a status indicator that tells you whether you're recording or streaming right now. You can have an FPS counter to tell you what your current frame rate is. And then you can also have the number of viewers that are currently watching your stream, depending on if, Share has the ability to talk with that service and get that information back from you. And that's kind of nice. And like I was saying before, if you go into the broadcast settings, you can actually open up, you can click on this and actually it allows you to import a transparent PNG file so that you can have a custom stream overlay with which to brand yourself on one of these services. Uh, I won't really go into the specifications for this, but basically make sure this is whatever the say the resolution is that you're streaming or recording at, and also that it's a just a, a full size transparent PNG because you can't just have like a weird sized one and drag it around. There's no availability to do that in here. Next up, we went over connecting to your different accounts that you can share stuff between these. You can activate this overlay so that the different pieces are added to different portions of your game. And then you can change your keyboard shortcuts to whatever you like. Pretty self-explanatory there. Recording, you can tell it where you want your recordings to be saved. I have a special recording footage folder on my second hard drive for that. You can set up your streaming settings to allow friends to try and join you. I don't really use that feature, so I'm gonna turn that off. Broadcast, we went over gallery. You can ask where you want to upload your screenshots that you take from the program. Either you can upload them to Google Photos, to Imgur, or you can have it always ask you. You can have notifications set up. So when you open and close the share, I'm gonna turn notifications off, but these are pretty 
These are pretty self-explanatory if you want to use any of these. And then last but not least, the privacy controls. So if you're trying to record with, with the NVIDIA Share via GeForce, and it's giving you an error that says you need to enable something in the privacy settings, that is this bottom piece in your settings. You need to come here, go to privacy control, and say yes, turn on desktop capture for instant replays, recording, broadcasts, and screenshots. It really shouldn't require you to do this when you're playing games, but for whatever reason, it always, depending on the version of share that you're using, it sometimes always thinks that you're trying to record the desktop, so it's a good thing to have that enabled by default so that it doesn't give you an error, especially when you're running low on time or you're late to your stream and you want to get started immediately. And that's basically more or less everything for the GeForce Experience Share. The only other thing is you can view your gallery of videos that you've made. This also includes your screenshots. And then you can also enable or disable your microphone right here and customize it to utilize, like I'm using my Blue Yeti stereo microphone. You can set the volume for it, and this will take over your default system settings and change them, so be careful with this. And if you have it enabled for that microphone, you can also boost it to a certain extent. Like if I put this up to max, I can further boost it from there. But I just want this to stay at 55%. And then I can, so let's have this set to always on. You can also enable a push to talk button so that it only hears your voice while you're talking. And then over here for webcam, you can either have your webcam on or off. And the webcam will take whatever your system default webcam is. If you have more than one webcam enabled on your computer, look on the channel's video list. You'll find a tutorial that tells you how to disable your default webcam if you're playing on like a laptop that has one built in. You can actually disable that so that the system doesn't even recognize that it's there so that it will use your fancy like Logitech or Razer webcam by default. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you fiddle around with the GeForce experience. And you can actually set this up to start recording if you want. And I can actually close the HUD and open up the, what is this? Um, no Man's Sky and hodink around in here for a sec. Look, there's my spaceship. This is actually a new game mode that they just released in No Man's Sky that I'm gonna review and to see if it makes up for all the false advertising that the developers did. But so far the game looks like the exact same pile of crap it was when it launched, so we'll just have to see how that works. So now I can tab back out, and then I'll go back to the GeForce experience, open up the share, and I'll stop the recording. Now I can go to the gallery and I can actually look at this and play it. So what does this look like? You gonna let me play it? There we go. Oh, and it actually lets you trim it up a little bit for when you... Okay, so I can set the start point to here and the end point to here, and then I can now upload just that little section to the web if I want. Oh, that's kind of nice, and I can determine the volume. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. So that's basically the whole of the GeForce experience. It's not really complex. It's just getting in there and getting started is never always the simplest because it used to be when you loaded in here, you had this tab for the shadow play, and then you could adjust all the settings from one settings panel instead of breaking it up into a lot of hidden settings where there's a bunch of different buttons that lead to a bunch of different settings, and that's kind of annoying. But yeah, so that's how you set up and use the NVIDIA Share program. It changes from time to time. If it changes drastically from this video, please let me know and I will do an updated tutorial and show you how all those settings work and explain some things. And until next time, I hope this video has been informative for you guys and gals at home. If you have any questions, throw those down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share this video with your friends if you want them to experience the wonderful fun of the share system. And I'll catch you guys and gals next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe, like I just said, and toodles, everybody.